Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome back. It's a Tuesday morning, and it is, of course, September 15th. We are to the middle of the month. We've made it. Um, today, we're going to tackle just a little bit of Scripture. We're going to finish up Chapter 4, finally. Uh, we're looking at Chapter 4 in the Gospel of Luke, of course. Um, we're going to look at verses 40 to 44 today. That's the, the bite that we're going to take off today. Uh, if you remember, we've had the last few days, we've had Jesus uh, going to Nazareth and uh, his hometown and speaking in, in the synagogue. Uh, and the whole, they love me, they love me not thing that went on there. Uh, then now he's gone to Capernaum, where, where his, which became his home, his home base, so to say, uh, and he uh, has gone pre there and preached in the and spoke in the synagogue again. Uh, he's he's healed yesterday. He healed uh, Peter's mother-in-law, and she got up to serve him. And remember that whole thing about that, that once we we find Christ, that we're really called to to serve uh, him and his people. So. Today we're going to continue on from there, um, and he um, he's still in in Capernaum for the moment, and uh, uh, we'll be for the next day or two, because uh, tomorrow we'll talk about calling the first disciples. So it really starts to to uh, starting to heat up. It's been picking up pace here, but we're continuing to pick up pace. So let's look at uh, chapter four in Luke's gospel, uh, verses forty to forty four. As the sun was setting, all those who had any who were sick with various kinds of diseases brought them to him, and he laid his hands on each of them and cured them. Demons also came out of many, shouting, You are the Son of God. But he rebuked them and would not allow them to speak, because they knew that he was the Messiah. At daybreak he departed and went into a deserted place, and the crowds were looking for him. And when they reached him, they wanted to prevent him from leaving them. But he said to them, I must proclaim the good news of the kingdom of God to other cities also, for I was sent for this purpose. So he continued proclaiming the message in the synagogues of Judea. So, all right. He's going with a with a vengeance. He's, he's curing people. People are bringing people of all kinds of maladies. And Jesus is helping them all. He's laying hands on them. Uh, which of course is a is a way that we, we talk about laying ha laying on of hands and, and a lot of times when we commission a new pastor all the pastors will will that are in attendance will will come around and and put their hands on them and or the people in the congregation will put their hands on them and pray over them. Um, it's a way of blessing uh, uh, that, that we we still do it today. Um, and here he's he's doing this. He's healing all these people. He's casting out these demons like we did the other day with casting the demon out of the man. And we uh, have this casting out of the demons, and the demons are trying to to say they know who you are. We know you're the Son of God, mm -hmm. and uh, but he's not letting them proclaim this. Um, the interesting thing, of course, is, is that here at this early stage, as we so often talk about, it's the it's the the, the ones that shouldn't know who Jesus is that pick up on who he is, the blind and the, the children and, and all of those, and the demons. Uh, the demons uh, know who he is. Um, so that, that, that is the message there of how blind others can be. And, and of course, the people back in Nazareth basically were wanting cheap parlor tricks out of Jesus and not really under, the, they were looking at him as the son of Joseph, remember, not the son of God. So we've got to be careful we don't get trapped in that mindset ourselves, and hopefully we don't. Hopefully we've got the advantage of looking through the, the, the time between then and Jesus and all of the learning and all of the scripture that, that we see Jesus for who he is, the Son of God, uh, the, the incarnate. Um, at daybreak, he he leaves them and he goes off to to uh, to get some uh, you know to refuel and to uh, to recharge his batteries. And you remember, Jesus is fully human as well as fully God, and so he too needs to recharge a little bit. He needs some time to go off and pray. And Jesus does a lot of praying. Actually, it's one of the things you'll see in in the scripture, like in in Luke's gospel. Remember when the Spirit came on him after the baptism? It wasn't during the baptism. It wasn't coming out of the water when the Spirit came. It was after Jesus prayed. So Jesus is going off and he's into a to into a private place. Um, it's not, not, not Jesus talks about not that you you pray in big and fancy words in front of everybody, but that you go off and and you meditate and contemplate and, and recharge and refuel. Uh, through prayer. so and, and we all need to remember to do that. I need to remember to do that too. Um, 
the crowds come looking for him. And then we, I think we have an interesting metaphor here with the crowds that are coming out looking for Jesus. Um, and not, don't go away, don't go away. Um, I, I see there a metaphor of for us. We, you know, when we find Jesus, you know, hopefully we want to share him. But that we don't want to hoard the love of Christ. That we don't want to hold on to that. Um, I do think there is that temptation, though, um, especially when we when we when we go on a, 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 an idea that that it's all about our faith. And once we believe in Jesus, we're saved and we're good. And then we, we don't really have to change our lives. We don't really have to profess Jesus as our Savior. We just yeah, it's all in here. It's all personal experience. So, you know, I'm spiritual. I'm not religious. That, that kind of a thing has to. You have to be careful because you're supposed to share the love of Christ Jesus. That's you know, Jesus came for all. Jesus came for everyone. Jesus came to be shared with all the cities, not just our city. So I think we that I think there's something we we need to remember in that a little bit there at the end of the chapter of chapter four. Uh, so he proclaimed. So he continued proclaiming the message in the synagogues of Judea. Uh, he kept going. He kept working. Uh, and uh, that work's supposed to be continuing today through us as, as his advocates, as his emissaries, as disciples into this world. So that's where I'm going to leave you today. A little shorter than I've been doing, which is okay, because I tend to get a little long on these, and I want to make them a little bit more palatable. So uh, have a very blessed day. Tomorrow we're going to start getting disciples. So have a great day and be a blessing to someone today. And we'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.